Hi, I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. I would like to thank all of you who left feedback on my What's in My Bag Speedy B25 um, video ideas. And, um, you know, I gave some ideas that I had and, um, you know, I really appreciate, you know, all the feedback because unboxings and hauls are just not sustainable, not what I started my channel about at all. Um, you know, more to be informative. So I really do appreciate that. So um, one of the ideas I had was to share how I started luxury and if you were interested in maybe some tips on how you could start your luxury collection. And the response was very uh, positive and was yes for that. So I'm going to put them both into this video. And um, you know, I hate video disclaimers. I hate them, hate them, hate them. It's none of my business how you paid for anything in your life as long as you didn't ask me for the money. But I am going to tell you my story, which I've never shared before, because it is a part of how I started luxury. So first off, I did not get my first designer bag till I was 40 or 41. I didn't get them young. It never even occurred to me to buy them. And I'm not saying that, you know, buying them young is wrong. It's just my story. Um, I got married very young, had children very young. Um, for those that uh, have misconceptions about me, my husband was a pizza delivery driver and he didn't make a lot of money. He worked six days a week. Actually, our entire marriage, he has worked six days a week. He has never ever had two days off, ever, ever. So, you know, we struggled, of course. Um, we had the one day a week off. Um, our big treat was he would go, um, it was on Tuesday nights, and he would go pick up Chinese food for $8. We'd put the kids to bed, and we would watch 90210 and Melrose Place. Do you remember those? <laughs> That's a long time ago. I'm really dating myself. They changed the show to Wednesday night. It made me so mad. It ruined our dates. <laughs> but um, everything in our lives have been about our children, 100% our children. Um, we bought our first home, age 22 for me, 23 for him. Um, our second home at 24 and 25 and just kept going. But it was all for the children. Um, I remember having $5 shoes from Payless and my daughters were wearing Christian Dior. It was all about them. Um, family vacations, they've been to Mexico, to Canada, all across the United States, Disneyland, San Diego, Disney World, um, Boston, New York. I mean, I can't even name all the places we've taken them. It was always about them. We put them through college both of them debt-free. We paid 100% for your college and bought them both matching new cars. We were driving, I don't know how old my husband's car was, but mine was 11 years old. I, I didn't care. It was a BMW and it had heated seats. As long as you have heated seats, I am happy. I'm not a car person. But when I finally did decide that I wanted to start purchasing luxury, um, how I got it was by selling things I didn't use. Just flat out looking around the house and it was a different era. It was, you know, a while ago, eBay was much better. Their fees are really high now. I still recommend them. It's a good way to sell things, but um, I just started selling, you know, stuff, you know, that I wasn't using. The first things I started purchasing was um, designer jewelry. Jewelry has always been my passion. Way over handbags. Love, love, love jewelry. So um, I had a lot of just, you know, really plain sterling silver pieces. Started selling those and buying David Yerman. And when I realized that I could sell stuff and get money and then get what I wanted, um, I started, you know, selling more and more things, just all sorts of stuff on eBay. Um, for my first luxury bag, it was the Trevi PM, and I had saved up about $1,200. I was working and um, had put that money aside, and when I went to go purchase the bag, um, I was going to get the totally, I don't even remember if I was going to get the PM or the MM, whichever one was $1,200 at that time, in the monogram print. Husband hates monogram, 
hated that bag. <laughs> he hated it. And um, so he was looking at um, bags that had feet and, and in the Damier Ben. And he said, if you want the Trevi, which it was double the price, he said, I'll pay the other half. We were also looking at a Chanel and, um, you know, a few other things. So I did go with the Trevi and it was very generous of him to pitch that in. Um, my second luxury bag was a Chanel uh, Timeless Tote, which he bought for me for Valentine's Day. And then I bought my third one, which was the Louis Vuitton um, Never Full MM in the Damier Ben in the old print before they raised the price. And um, yeah, that's one of the few I kind of regret selling that one. I was scared that the, um, the, the Damier Ben would crack. But um, after I got those three bags, I started looking at my closet and I had a lot of Coach and a lot of Dooney and Burke really pretty bags in great condition. So I started selling those and that helped fund different bags and, um, you know, kind of just went from there. Um, I did not get my first small leather good till after I had three bags and, um, didn't, you know, collect a lot of those for a long time. I really did bags. Um, and so just some ways that I personally save, and I am not going to tell you how to save money because what works for me may not work for you. You know, I'm not going to tell you bring your lunch to work because I work from home. So that's, you know, I, I eat at home. <laughs> you know, it's not fair for me to tell you that. Don't go to Starbucks every day. Again, I work from home, so that's something I don't do. Um, you have to decide what you can pull back on. But some things that I do... I, had, I wrote some notes down because there was a whole lot of things to, um, to go over here. <laughs> but um, some things that I do is all of my clothes, with the exception of two band sweatshirts and one jacket <laughs> um, that I got this winter, I always get on sale. I do not buy full price. Um, everything was on sale. This was on sale and it was an extra 60% off. I want to say this sweater was like, I don't know, it was under $20. It was probably 15. I don't know. It's really cute though. It's got the little moon and stars. <laughs> you know, I like celestial. Um, I buy all my clothes on sale, um, which that may not work for you because you may need to wear a suit to work or, you know, I mean, I'm at home. I can wear whatever I want to wear while I'm working. Um, I don't color my hair at all. This is how it grows out of my head. There are no highlights, lowlights, glazing, nothing. And again, that may not work for you. My daughters color their hair. I don't know why. They're young. I don't understand it. Their hair's pretty, but you know, I don't know anybody that doesn't color their hair to be honest with you besides me, but that's just something I don't spend money on. Um, I do my own nails. I have for years. Um, I did get them done a couple of years ago. I started getting the um, acrylics on and every visit was like $50 and I'm like, it's just ridiculous. I can do this at home. So I do do my own nails. Um, I do get expensive haircuts, but since I don't color, I, I think that makes up for it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think we all know where we can pull back to save. Um, you know, if you're watching this, I'm sure you're a grown woman or man and you know what you're spending money on that you could pull back on. For me, I really need to pull back on buying clothes on sale. I have things in my closet with the tags on them because they were a great deal. I don't need any more clothes. That's something I have to work on. Nail polish, I can pull back on that. Makeup, I have plenty of makeup, plenty of lip products. I really need to start using what I have and, you know, stop buying and that would be a great way, you know, to start saving. But when I did start saving, I opened a separate bank account. Um, just, it was completely in my name. Uh, well, not in my name, it was in my husband's and my name, but he got some offer where um, if you open this checking account, you got $200. And he's like, do you want it? And I'm like, sure. 
I don't care if his name's on it, it made no difference to me. But most of us, you know, within your your banking will let you open several different, you know, types of accounts. Like you can have a savings and, you know, I think it's important to have that money in a different account because if you're mingling it in, it's just too easy to go to Target and just spend it or, you know, wherever it is that you like to shop. It's just easy to mingle it in on bills and you know, stuff like that. So I like having a separate bank account. And let's see, let's see where I'm at here. <laughs> Trying to remember everything I did. Okay, so for starting your collection, I highly recommend that you don't listen to anybody's advice on what you want. If you love Louis Vuitton, don't be influenced. If you know you want a Louis Vuitton Speedy and don't go on the purse forum and people are like, oh, I hate the Speedy, I hate the Speedy. Don't be influenced, you know, get what you like. Don't pay attention to what anybody else says. Don't be influenced by your friends or your husband or anybody else. If your heart is set on a bag and you know that you love it, don't let anybody talk you out of it. It's too expensive, I don't like it, this or that. My husband hates, hates, hates the monogram print. He's bought me several gifts in the monogram print because I like it. You have to like it. Some things that I wish I would have done when I started, some mistakes that I think that I made was um, uh, buying without trying my things in the bag. Huge, huge, huge mistake buying without seeing the bag in person, seeing it online and ordering it and not seeing it in person and thinking it's great when I got it because it was cute and it didn't work out for me. So I really, really recommend taking your time, trying your things in the bags and really, really thinking about it. It took me, I don't know how many years to buy my jumbo because I was going back and forth between the jumbo and the medium tried my things in them every time that I saw them and finally chose them. Don't make that mistake because it's a huge difference when your things are in the bag. It's going to feel different. If the weight's different, it's going to lay on your shoulder or however you carry it is going to feel completely, completely different. And let's see, I did get some questions and um, so I'm going to answer those um, from Marsha Collette. She said, if you had $500, would you buy a small leather good or save for a bag? And I know this is the opposite of what most people say. I would 100% save for the bag. And let me give you an example here. I've got my Speedy um, 25, Speedy B25 in the Damier Ben. Oh, I should have looked up the price. I'll put the correct price down below, but I want to say it's like 13 20 or something along there and this is a $500 Chanel wallet little uh, zippy coin purse so bag so yes this is more it is you know a little bit more than double but when is the last time or ever that you've been out with your friends or at the mall or anywhere and you have been like oh wow, I love that lady's wallet, or oh my goodness, her cosmetic pouch is so cute. This is for you to enjoy. I have a lot of small leather goods, I know I do, but this is, you know, in your bag. The bag is, to me, way more important than the small leather good. And you can find out by, you know, plenty of YouTube videos how different canvases wear, different leathers wear, just depending on what you're looking for. And I have another example here, which this piece is more than $500. But just for an example, this Chanel wallet, I believe it is $1,250. This bag is like maybe $100 more or, you know, give or take, because I don't quite remember the price. I mean, I just feel like you get a lot more out of saving for the bag. Now, like I said, I owned three bags before I got my first um, luxury small leather good, which was a Louis Vuitton um, Damier Ben Zippy wallet. But the bags just, to me, 
just make more sense to invest in. They have higher resale value than small leather goods. And you're going to get, I think, just, you know, more bang for your buck. That's just my opinion. You know, start however that you want to start, but that's just, you know, how I feel. I feel definitely bag over small leather goods. I would always pick a bag. I didn't really start buying small leather goods until I had a really good collection of bags. And the next question is from Alice Chadwick, and she says, what would you recommend for a first luxury bag? That's like almost impossible to answer because it just so depends on you. They're so, so personal. Um, honestly, if I could go back in time, the first couple of bags that I bought, I would have bought classics over um, trendy or popular bags. So if I was going to recommend something to you, I would say pick a classic that won't go out of style, that you won't get tired of. Just make sure that you absolutely love it. And um, that's, you know, the most important thing that it makes you very, very, very happy. And then the other question is from Tanya N. And she asks, uh, what about buying pre-loved versus new? Um, there's huge savings, huge savings for buying pre-loved. I uh, personally have not purchased pre-loved yet. Um, I have definitely looked into it. Um, when they were discontinuing the original Empreinte Speedy to bring in the new model, I was really, really researching that bag and I was going to get one pre-loved, but I decided I didn't like how they sagged. And um, the most recent one that I was considering was last summer, and that's the Dior Dior Rever. And resale on that is so much less than in the store, but I hadn't seen it in person yet. And when I went and saw it in person, the bag absolutely, it was not for me. But um, if I was going to purchase that one, definitely pre-loved. So you just need to look into it. You need to for sure be on a reputable site. I was looking when I was shopping um, a Yugi's Closet and Fashion File. There's a lot of Instagram sellers, a lot of YouTube sellers. Um, if you're doing eBay or you know anything with somebody you don't really know, I highly recommend paying to authenticate the bag. But there's definitely huge, huge savings. And the bags that I have sold have all been in immaculate, like new collection. And I have taken huge, huge losses on them. So I definitely think pre-loved is a great way to start your luxury collection for sure. Um, lots of, lots of good deals to be had and really well-kept bags. You just have to, you know, really look at the pictures, ask a lot of questions, you know, especially about odors. Um, you know, everybody's, you know, sense of smell is different, but, um, you know, if it bothers you, if odors bother you, you want to ask, you know, does it have heavy perfume smell? You know, do you have pets in the home? Stuff like that. Um, but yeah, absolutely an amazing, amazing way to, um, to start your collection. I think pre-loved is a great way to go. But, um, you know, I just think that it's just a matter of taking a little bit of money each month from things that you don't have to do, but you've got to decide what those things are. You know, um, I think we all tend to kind of overbuy certain things or be tempted by certain things, you know, so when I really want something, I pull back and I'm like, what can I do without? I don't have to have, I really don't have to have all these nail polishes. I just, I got this one yesterday. <laughs> I really don't have to have that. I bought a whole bunch last week. So that's something I've got to work on too, for sure. But I hope that this helped a little bit. Um, I'm just, I'm not somebody to tell you what to do, but, um, and well, I am going to tell you one thing what to do. This is my most, most important thing on starting a luxury collection. Do not go into debt over luxury save that money and and it took me i saved up for my chanel j12 watch for four or five years and they kept raising the price on it and raising the price on it and raising the price on it and now they've lowered the price 650 dollars really <laughs> that's not fair but 
I saved up for it until I had the cash for it. I just, I cannot stress enough, luxury is not something to go into debt over. It's just not worth it. None of us needs it. It's fun and it's, you know, makes me happy. And I know when you start your collection or add to your collection, it's gonna make you happy. Debt doesn't make anybody happy. So that's my only thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of tell you to do, but thank you so much for watching another video. And thank you all again for the ideas for the other videos. A lot of them were about vlogging and I am going to attempt that next weekend when I am in Be Beverly Hills. I don't know how it's gonna come out. I've never vlogged before. Um, so we'll see if it makes it to air. It may be just totally terrible, but I'm really gonna try. <laughs> well, I hope you have a wonderful day today and take care. I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye-bye.